My name is Suzanne Phillips. Um, my PhD is in microbiology and molecular genetics. Um, I uh, am a Christian who believes in the biblical account of creation and the flood. And I use molecular biology to learn more and understand about bacteria. The main reason that I trust what the Bible says about origins is because I found the Bible to be true in many other aspects. There are things that the Bible and God invites us to test him on. He invites us to taste and see that he is good. He invites us to experience the Holy Spirit and then to experience love and joy and peace. My personal experience has been that I can't have joy in my life unless I also have God in my life. And so these things that the Bible asked me to taste and see, these things I'm able to experience, um, give me hope and give me um, faith that the other things that I can't experience, that I can't test scientifically, for example, that God is the creator or that God sent a flood, uh, it gives me um, the, the faith to believe that those things are also true. God says something about himself and I find it to be true um, by testing. And then those things that he also says about himself that I can't test, I find to, be, uh, to also be true because he is a truthful person. He is a truthful being. The things I've learned about God in my studies and in my science is that God pays particular attention and is very interested in, in details. He takes care of everything that a being needs, and he accounts for that in all aspects of the environment in which they live. He's provided for us abundantly, and he not only provides for humans abundantly, but he provides for the other organisms that he's created to be on this earth abundantly. I've been very inspired as I see and as I study on a molecular basis how organisms interact with their environment and how they are so well provided for. I have worked in a secular environment. I did a postdoc at the University of California in Riverside. And in that laboratory, there were a number of different people from a number of different backgrounds. Um, most importantly, I found that um, I worked well with them and they respected me because I treated them with Christian kindness. Uh, we interacted in a very uh, respectful way. Uh, additionally, I invited some of them to go to church with me and they were very happy to, uh, to learn about what I had to say. I never hid the fact that I believed in the Bible or believed in creation, but it was supported and was backed up by the fact that I did, um, I worked very hard and I did excellent molecular biology research. So in my experience doing doing good research and um, doing good science uh, is a really excellent way to establish rapport with your comrades and with your colleagues. Essentially, we can ask, why did God create anything? And from my belief is that God made humans, especially for his, his pleasure and for his edification and for our own, for the joy of being able to know him. Uh, he created humans and, and put them on this earth that he had made especially to be an environment for them. As part of that environment, we need microorganisms. It turns out that microorganisms are an essential part to how, of, of how this system works, how this biome works. Not only individual niches, but the entire world, the entire globe, how it functions. We need microorganisms. A very, very, very few microorganisms have um, become pathogenic. They interact with the human body in a way that um, is harmful to us. I personally think that this is possibly due to some mutations, possibly due to some degradation on our part. Maybe we don't interact with them appropriately the way, the way we should have appropriate responses to them in terms of our immune system. Um, maybe they become mutated. We know in, in a, a number of cases that those bacteria that cause infection are actually virally infected themselves. So they don't cause infection if they don't have a virus that's infecting them. So they themselves are um, modified in such a way as to be damaging to humans. So absolutely, God created microbes. They're part of this world. They're part of us. They, they a large number of them uh, live inside of our body as well. And we find that they are beneficial to us. So God absolutely created them, and it is my uh, personal thought that only a very few, and, and knowledge that only a very, very few of them actually cause disease. 
And probably this is because of the blight of sin uh, on the world. We know that when sin entered the world, there were specific curses uh, and, and, and things started going downhill from there. So it is true that bacteria are the simplest living things on this planet. At the same time, bacteria are so unbelievably complex, we still have no idea really how and why they, they do the things that they do. We are, we're trying to learn about them. But uh, even though they are the simplest forms of life on this planet, um, their complexities and the complexity of a cell, which is the simplest form of reproducing life, is, is beyond that which could naturally have accidentally happened. Um, if a, if a cell is not actively, even a bacteria cell, is not actively um, carrying out mechanisms inside of itself, it will cease to live. It has to constantly work against equilibrium, constantly work against entropy, and constantly work against chaos. And so in order to do that, it has to have a many, many mechanisms that would have had to simultaneously been present if we're looking at an evolutionary system simultaneously be able to have a membrane, simultaneously be able to repair and build and make new membrane, simultaneously be able to have proteins that carry out DNA synthesis and simultaneously have proteins that carry out protein synthesis. So the necessity of all of these things functioning simultaneously really rules out the, prop the possibility of them accidentally or um, by random chance coming together uh, to make something that's functional, even though they are a simple form of life they still are amazingly complex. First off, there are so many things in the human body that are amazingly complex and amazingly um, well-suited for the environment in which we live, amazingly uh, designed to to adapt to different things we put in our body, adapt to different things that we're exposed to in the environment, that it's impossible to not see that there is design um, bound up in the human. There are some arguments that if we were designed, then why is our eye the certain way that it is? And yet um, there's been research even by secular biologists, um, a secular anatomist who recognize now that the eye is, is perfectly made um, it's for the environment and perfectly made for the type of light that comes into our eyes. And instead of this being a, a problem, we now see that no one could have designed an eye or no one could have designed a human better. In fact, we all know that the human eye can do things that we can never make a camera lens do, uh, but the human eye does this naturally and immediately and adapts to whatever situation it finds itself in. So instead of being something that takes away from the idea of humans being beautifully designed, um, the human eye actually um, adds to and gives us more evidence that the human, uh, especially the human eye, is designed. So it is true that human cells and uh, cells in the environment die regularly. Uh, that is the process that we see happening now, even in healthy human beings. Healthy human beings lose skin cells. Healthy human beings lose cells off their digestive tract on a regular basis. Um, and in fact, the protective layer of, of cells that make up our skin is in fact made up of dead uh, human and dead skin cells. So how could there have not been any death in Eden? That is, that is a question. Um, does God look at death differently when we're talking about a single cell? versus the entire organism. We know that when our skin cells die, we don't mourn them. We don't mourn the loss of a being. Uh, or can we imagine, or is it beyond our imagination to have an environment where there is no death? So first, I'd like to not limit God. It is very possible that the way that he created Eden and the way that he initially created humans and the environment in which we live in this earth allowed for there not to be cell death, allowed for bacteria not to die, allowed for um, my, small microorganisms not to die and allowed for human cells not to die. So I don't know what it might have looked like. The only thing I can tell you is what nature looks like now, especially at a molecular level, since that's that's what I study. And at a molecular level, cells die as a normal pro, as a normal part of healthy um, life in the in the human and as healthy life in the environment. 
So I, I personally differentiate between there being death of a cell versus death of an organism. At the same time, there are some organisms where the death of the cell is the death of the entire organism. They, that they are only single-celled organisms. This might be acceptable to me um, for, there, for there to have been death of single-celled organisms before the fall, but it's, it's not maybe acceptable to, to all Christians. And so I'd like to say that it might have been different um, based on what we know now uh, and the biology that we know now, it, it might not have been different. Um, but those are things we get to learn and we get to study when we get to heaven. Uh, I certainly will get to have a job uh, for all eternity because understanding God and understanding the life that he created um, is a job that, that these 80 or 100 years that I have here in this world uh, is not going to be enough time for me to finish. So I look forward to studying that and look forward to uh, seeing the, the new environment that God creates when he recreates this world. So earlier we talked about the possibility of cellular death before the fall. Um, you can reject this uh, and, it, and that may be true uh, or we can accept this and that may also be true. We don't really have a way of testing to see what life was like or what the environment was like before uh, Adam and Eve fell into sin. We don't know what it was like in the Garden of Eden. However, uh, it's my belief and I believe this is the, the Bible is clear on this also that there was not animal death before the fall. Instead, uh, creation groans and, and all creation groans because of the fall. If we imagine that the animals might have died before there was sin, uh, some people like to say that this is a possibility to account for the fossils that we find in the rocks. And uh, although this, this might be an attractive way to explain how there are fossils uh, in these rocks that seem to be so old that maybe um, there was a long period of time before Adam and Eve fell, but the animals were dying and being buried in the rocks. This is not consistent at all with the biblical narrative. Um, neither is it very helpful, actually, for the explanation of the rocks. <clears throat> the ages are still too long. If you look at the, the rocks and the animals have st are still in a specific sequence. According to the Bible, um, we think probably the first animal died when Christ sacrificed the animal to generate clothing for Adam and Eve. Um, at that point in time, it's likely the first time that they, they see something die. We know after that, the animals died when they, Adam and Eve were instructed to um, perform the, the sacrificial and the laying on of sins onto the lamb, and then those animals were killed. Um, that probably, and according to the Bible, is the first time an animal died that instead of there being long ages during, when, during a time when Adam and Eve didn't sin, but animals were dying, that's not a biblical uh, interpretation. Uh, even though it might, uh, some people imagine, account for the presence of animals in the fossil record, this doesn't align with the Bible. Additionally, the fossil record is, is in order uh, such that um, that wouldn't be accounted for by death in the Garden of Eden either. So as someone who believes in what the Bible uh, states, uh, I reject the idea that there was animal death before the fall. Like I said, I, I allow for the possibility of there being cellular death on the, on the human body, but not organismal death, that humans didn't die and animals didn't die and likely plants didn't die um, before the fall as well. So what actually happened um, and, and how um, God views the death of very tiny organisms or the death of uh, large organisms we know according to the story of, of David, when he's uh, addressed and caught in, in the act of sin by Nathan, that they valued animal life. He talks about a lamb being treated as, as one of the family and how uh, killing this lamb would have been so detrimental because that family loved that lamb like a child. And so we know that God values uh, the, the life of animals. And of course, Christ himself says that not an animal falls, not a sparrow, not a small, tiny bird falls, that God does not see it. And so, Death before the fall is not consistent with those uh, indications of Christ. <laughs>